couple of ways I like to fill in little corners of my time are by listening to folk music and scrolling through TikTok. Now, ever since I started watching TikToks, uh, the song Soldier Poet King has come up from time to time. And every time it does, it makes me happy because it's a great song. But it usually also fills me with this deep, unexplainable off pissedness. It just uh, gets under my skin and makes me mad somehow. And I thought to myself, hey, that's pretty weird. Let's uh, let's sit down and figure out why. So I did, and uh, it turns out there's actually a lot to unpack here. So buckle your seatbelts. We're going on a journey, but not like a traveling journey, but like a brain and heart journey. So before we start analyzing folk music, let's just dive into the ticker talk here and see how kids be using this song. Let's see what we've got. We've got a uh, a recipe, a spell from the the witch side of TikTok here, POV here flowers we got cosplay looking kind of stuff uh yes ren fair stuff i feel like i'm doing kind of a react sort of video right now and i don't know how to do that but the only thing giving me serotonin is playing the song at full blast and imagining the village's local witch and i are in love and we're listening to town sing about old legends of warriors defeating dragons okay all right so so people were using the song for like aesthetic videos, for like cottage core or fantasy or kind of witchy vibe sort of stuff. Uh, people are using it for POVs, cosplay stuff where you're pretending to be another character. I've seen some dance videos, some great covers, and it's just generally being used by people who want a kind of fantasy, folksy, medieval-y kind of vibe, you know? And so now we get to why it's bothered me whenever the song has come up, because it kind of feels like and is used like it's an old British or Irish folk song, but it ain't that. It's an acoustic pop song. Traditional folk music gets passed over by modern culture all the time, and here's a perfect place where it would fit in really nicely, but no, this upstart caricature of the genre takes its place instead. Confound it. All right, I'm thinking we uh, change up the location. Let's see where we can shoot the next bit here. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I was thinking that tree will do real good. Get right, right up into there. While sitting here about 20 feet up, I can't help but think that this is either the worst idea I've had in a while or the best. So this song is what I would call folk music, like faux folk music, faux as in fake, get it? But does it actually matter whether the song is authentic folk music? No, it doesn't, but let's keep pretending it does matter for a little bit longer here. What is it that makes Soldier Poet King feel like a folk song? Well, the first thing is the instrumentation, acoustic guitars, banjos, pretty self-explanatory. Also the lyrics talking about swords and kings, also pretty self-explanatory there. It has this pretty melody that sounds sufficiently like a pentatonic Irish melody or something. Blazing instrumental breaks, while stupid easy to play on guitar, are sufficiently folksy and are just dying for a hurdy-gurdy cover. And then there's the pleasantly folksy twist of having a lilting refrain that's semi-nonsensical. In fact, this refrain reminds me of the song To Rilu, an Irish lullaby, which is another faux folk song. You know, to a lu a lu ra, to a lu a lie. Hush, now don't you cry. These songs are tapping into hearing folk songs as a small child and bringing back that kind of deep nostalgia from hearing a song that was part of your very earliest childhood. It's kind of like when I was reintroduced to the song Tub Thumper for the first time since I was four. That, that was a real trip, let me tell you. But the thing is, if you're going to be snooty and technical about it, like I am right now, these just aren't folk songs. They're pop songs. They're a native part of a world of copyright law and record releases and shit like that. The lyrics seem to be telling a story, but in reality they're a lot more abstract than any traditional song that I know. And it's so 2010's folk pop sometimes, like that thumping kick drum and that big bombastic final chorus just scream, Hey, you guys like Mumford and Sons, right? For reference, there's where the top of the house is. I am parallel to it, and I don't know exactly how I'm gonna get down from here. Actually, I do know because I cheated and put a chair under the tree to get up into it in the first place. Because I'm not 17 anymore, and my athleticism has dwindled. Ugh. Oh boy. It's nice shooting outside, but the lawnmowers are out in full force, and boy, do I hate lawnmowers. Having formed my own opinions about the song, I decided to look up its origins. It turns out it is, of course, by the band The Oh Hellos, a band from that time, and we all collectively decided, you know what popular music needs right now? A lot of foot stomping, yelling, and banjos. simpler times. I also discovered that Soldier Poet King, like a lot of the Oholo's music, is inspired by the writings of C.S. Lewis. 
and not just his fantasy books, The Chronicles of Narnia, but like the actual theological brain and soul books like Mere Christianity and Screw Tape Letters. So that means that this song that the role players and pagans and such of TikTok have been absolutely jiving to is explicitly a Christian song about the coming of Jesus Christ at the end of time. I've seen mentioned in a bunch of places uh, Irish music or I guess like Irish folk tunes. I'm, I'm yeah. wondering how or sort of why that finds its way into your music or where the origins of your interest in that is or something like that? Sure, yeah. Um, well, our family, uh, me and Maggie and our parents, yeah. uh, we took a family vacation to Ireland in the summer of 2010. Yeah, okay. 2010. Summer 2010. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life to be there and hear the sessions happen. Yeah. I had decided like some of this is going into everything from yeah. now on. And then when we started writing together, it just happened. Yeah, okay. So do you listen, um, do you have like a few, I don't know, a few songs that are your favorite or like are there artists that you listen to that are um, Irish? I mean, We're not yeah. quite that knowledgeable. Okay, okay. It's more sure. just a general, yeah, that's no, really no. cool. No, that's You know fine. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> cool, yeah. Well, whatever then. <laughs> glad, glad it comes out, right. I suppose. Anyway, after yeah. all that brain work, does it even matter? Has anyone actually been bamboozled into thinking this was a traditional song? Or have I just wasted another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk? The way people talk about Soldier Poet King on TikTok and YouTube comment sections remind me of myself when I was 16 and I made a iTunes playlist of all the songs in my library that I thought might be feasible to play if I were somehow transported to some magical world like Middle Earth or Arthurian England. It was mostly indie acoustic songs from the 2000s. I'm pretty sure the only actual traditional song on there was John Barleycorn is played by the 70s band Traffic. I bet there's a lot of people out there who are like my younger self who would love to get into uh, these kinds of traditional folk music if it was more accessible. But here's the real zinger of a plot twist. I've never heard a traditional folk song that can really hit the spot in the same kind of way that Soldier Poet King does. Like, what folk song would I even use in its place? For that kind of quaint, comfy cottagecore vibe, maybe Country Life, as recorded by the Watersons. Bonus points, it was used in Autumn DeWilde's film adaptation of Jane Austen's book Emma, so it's already got that period piece association. But the thing is, it's not the most accessible, and it's kind of too chill. It's not this inspiring romp that Soldier Poet King is. Another English song that might fit the bill is the aforementioned John Barleycorn. super old, like several hundred years at least, and its association with beer would make it a fun choice for like a D&D tavern POV kind of video, and its pagan imagery would fit very nicely with the kind of like pagan witchcraft aesthetic kind of thing. But songs like John Barleycorn, while they really scratch that itch for ancient legends, they tend to feel more mysterious and esoteric, and they don't have that hopeful inspiration. Perhaps a closer fit would be one of these chipper Irish tunes, like Martin This Time. It's got a good jive to it, it's got a lilting, somewhat nonsensical refrain, and the plot is about a clever young maiden who tricks a bunch of horny soldiers and makes them look like total buffoons, so that's always entertaining. Uh, but the thing is, it, it's a light song, it doesn't have that energy, it doesn't have that mystery, that extra X-factor flavor, you know? So now I'm left to wonder, what is it about this song that's connecting with people so well? Well, I've laid out all the pieces, I just need to put them together. And bada bing, bada boom, that's right, we got a conclusion on our hands, folks. Firstly, the music and lyrics are perfectly balanced for the way people are using this song. The music is just folksy enough to set the mood, but just poppy enough to be able to uh, consume it comfortably. The lyrics are just specific enough to bring to your mind visions of sword-wielding heroes and great kings, but also vague enough to be able to Put your own imagination into it. More importantly, I would say that Soldier Poet King works so well because it is quite literally about the longing for the fulfillment of an ancient prophecy. That's where the whole Christianity thing comes in. See, it was relevant. The whole point of the song seems to be about hopeful longing for Christ to come at the end of time to tear down this messed up suffering world and build a perfect one. That's why it's such an exciting song about someone coming to tear your city down, you know? Honestly, I personally can't wait. Things are pretty crazy right now. As I'm recording this, people are uh, 
the whole protesting thing is going on. Maybe it feels like enforcing social justice where it doesn't belong, but the way things are going right now, it feels weird not to at least talk about it. Anyway, I just wanted to remind you that folk music is inherently anti-authoritarian, looking at you, the police, and if you can help out the Black Lives Matter movement at all, please do. You've been around the internet before in the last few days. You know the drill. Um, where were we? Uh, uh, yes, uh, the apocalypse, Christianity, and soldier poet King. But yeah, I'm not trying to say that you have to be Christian to get the song. What I'm saying is it's inherently about a sense of longing and a sense of belonging to a world outside of time and space, which is why it's such a hit and with fantasy fans, magic practitioners, people who just want to live a cozy life outside of society standards in, in the countryside growing a moss garden or whatever, you know? Well, this whole question about whether something is or isn't a folk song is pretty silly. Like, it's a really fun debate, but kind of dumb at the end of the day. Like, so what's folklore? It's basically based on tradition and variation. Folklore is passed down from person to person, and it changes slightly as different people pick it up, so it becomes this, you know, living thing. So let's apply this to music, and let's take a folk group, let's say people who like memes. We go to YouTube, we type in All Star by Smash Mouth, but, and bada bing, bada boom, you get a million different videos that have a remixed or covered or mashed up uh, All Star by Smash Mouth based on a tradition of making stupid variations on this song. That's, that's it's Smash Mouth by All Star is a folk song, and I will die on that pedestal defending that point. Like, I know it's not a folk song, but it kinda is, you know? You know, it's a song of the people. So yeah, that's just about all my thoughts on the matter. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into how my brain works. So yeah, until my next video, you take care.